one thing about these letters is, as you've seen, a lot of them look like they were written yesterday. It's hard to say if there's more comfort. But I got the sense that he didn't want her to know a lot of the craziness that he had seen in Vietnam. Or more pain. And then there's this letter. Reading the last letter his uncle ever wrote. We all went through boot camp and came over here together. And we'll all go home together. But there's definitely blood stain on the back. Knowing the last words he ever spoke. I want to go home. I just want to go home. He really did just want to go home. If it's possible to love someone you've never known, this letter makes me realize that I love my uncle because it's very hard uh, to hold it and to look at and to read because this is the one that, that makes me realize that Uncle Vinny was killed in a war. There are the burning questions. You know, was my uncle, was he uh, in peace? Was he in pain? What were the circumstances? The answer to that question... It was incoming rockets and mortar. And this screaming in, they were all blown up all over. Emergency medevac, ASAP! March 28, 1968. We didn't expect to get hit, and we did. Cam Lo, Vietnam. You remember hearing that he was fixing his Jeep, and that he did not hear the incoming artillery. Coming from everywhere, rockets and mortars and RPGs and he was killed that way. The minute before he died, he knew all these same people I knew. The minute before, the minute after, life and death. Mike Regan was there for both. He gave me something that day. Mike was holding his head and around his arms, around his chest, and was talking with him. And I was like this laying on the ground, and he was right here. In Mike Regan's arms, as the young man took his last breath. He died March 28th of 1968. But it was that day that he died. It was the first time I looked into his face. The face of 19-year-old Vinnie Santanello, Uncle Vinnie. It was dated March 28th of 1968. Judging by the way this letter looks, I have to imagine that it was found on him um, after he died. So while I feel like I'm not worthy to hold this letter, I'm damn proud to hold this letter. Because I know that my uncle, he made the ultimate sacrifice. And men like Mike, they made the sacrifice. They got to come home. And my uncle did it. If you've been in war, and you've experienced what war death is like, you never forget it. That day, and this face has stayed with Mike Regan for all these years. It's Vinny's face and the story that goes with it that haunts him and inspires his work 46 years later. I really believe this. I think that uh, his dying in my arms is why I'm an artist today. That particular moment yeah. may have been the most important moment of his life. Yeah. The project has come alive because of that. How many faces have you done? You know, I do so many a week that it's like hard to keep count. It's like, how many breaths did you take today? You know what I mean? I research everybody I draw. Each of the 4,100 portraits he's drawn. I know how they died and how they lived. We're trying to heal hearts because so many are broken. Hi, I'm Mary. Nice to see to you, dear. Oh, thank you so much for doing this. Do you know who I am? No. Okay, I'm Mike Regan, and um, I draw portraits of the fallen heroes that have fallen in the war. I've been doing it for about 10 years. These are some of them. Okay. So I brought you that. Every one of them is special. Every hero that's died for our country is special. He was my first baby. These are heroes for me who have died for me and you. I'm a combat veteran. I was in a bad place in Vietnam during a bad time. He won't mind if I mention it. On these long walks, he takes every day to clear his mind. I'll be honest with you. I have really sad moments. I have incredibly angry moments. Mike Regan uses this time. Uh, I let go. To do what he needs to do without anyone watching. That's when I cry. The flood of emotions take over instantly as he walks and reflects about his life and his work. I'm dealing with death every day. And that day. That day a fellow soldier died in his arms after whispering the words. Mike, I just want to go home. 
and then he closed his eyes and died. It really affected him. The long walks helped. I went for my long walk this morning, cried half my walk. Regan retired from the University of Washington 11 years ago as the director of trademarks and licensing. He retired so he could devote all his time to his art. I sharpen my pencils. And the minute I sit in my chair, the entire world becomes this small circle around me. Mike has to draw. This body of work which began after the first casualties in the U.S.-Iraq war. Ben was pretty early on. I think like 22 or 18. First Lieutenant Ben Colgan was portrait number 22 of Mike Regan's Fallen Heroes Project. Killed in the war November 2, 2003, Ben's commanding officer described him as the bravest, most decent, selfless man he'd ever known. How you doing? Joe lost a son. I'm good. Gained a friend when Mike Regan asked the question, can I do a portrait of your son? My gift to you. It's so special. I, I can't, it's hard to describe, but uh, just him sitting there, the way he was sitting, uh, it was really special to me, uh, that photograph, and, uh, and, uh, and then he captured it perfectly. And How many guys do you know, that, you know, that give their time, their talent, and their treasure away free? He's the only one I know, you know, and, uh, and uh, I know a lot of good people. <laughs> The last portrait I draw will be the day before someone draws mine. The portraits are drawn from the family's favorite photos. They are Mike Regan's gifts to those families. I'm trying to draw some life out of death. Who've lost loved ones in war. This young man is being carried away from his dad's funeral. This is a picture that was taken the last time this young man saw his daughter. It really changed my life. This is the first time this young lady saw her dad's portrait. Look at her. She's looking at her dad. Didn't get to come home. Okay, they wanted to. This is the wife and son without their husband and dad, and the son is hugging the flag. And the one I held wanted to come home. The last things he said to me is, Mike, all I want to do is go home. They didn't get to. That means they didn't get to say goodbye. When he created portrait number 22 10 years ago, Ben's, he wondered how many more. He thought, please, no more. This portrait of Bobby Jones is number 3,947. And it's helping Bobby's cousin Matthew heal. This was a great way to remember of that photo that he drew. It just makes my heart feel like it's going to explode with love. Because <laughs> I miss him so much. It's okay, baby. He's not hurting no more. We sent Bobby Jones home. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, it is. Thank you. That's why I draw every day. With each portrait. I just hear, get me done, get me home. Mike got to come home. Yes, he did. He came home, but there's a lot of broken hearts out there from coming home, too. You're welcome. I'm sorry for your loss. The biggest fear they have the biggest fear any of them have, that their sons or daughters are gonna be forgotten, isn't gonna happen as long as I'm around to make sure it doesn't. When Mike Regan looks back at his life and looks at what he's doing now... What's happening here is incredible. ...at what consumes him every day... As part of my promise is to make sure nobody forgets it. ...he feels blessed. Mike says, we've got to do them all. They both do. Thanks for letting me do this. He and his wife, Cheryl... Would you say he's one of the lucky ones? Yeah. The minute she knew who I was, she started crying. Lucky for the obvious reason. He survived the war in Vietnam... 58,000 Americans did not. But also lucky because late in his life, when the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq started, Regan found his calling. When will he stop? Well, he says, you know, he'll be at the drawing board when he kills over. That's what I think. <laughs> but it's not something I even had a choice of doing. You understand? Yeah. It's something he had to do. I understand how their son or daughter's died because I was there in a different war. 
And so began his Fallen Heroes project, as he calls it. It's taken over his life, this work to begin the healing. And that's what we live for. And bring the men and women home. I believe that if these portraits come home, and if the person receiving the portrait wants to believe that in that portrait is some possible closure for them, it's there for them to accept. That the message I'm getting from all these soldiers that I draw during my five hour conversation is, just send me home, Mike. You know, when I sit down here, I have such an obligation to do the best I can possibly do. This drawing is all about love. My love and respect for your family's tremendous loss, I will never forget. The Regans are grateful for those letters they receive from the families. There's a woman who wrote me a few weeks ago, and she just wanted to say thank you for the picture eventually. But she said, when the picture came in the envelope, it scared me. She said, so I set it on my coffee table in my living room. And she said, I just kept walking around it for hours. She said, I couldn't open it. There was so much energy around it, I couldn't open it. And she said, finally, I opened it, and I pulled out, and my son was home. There was one just today that we got that it was hard to read, thanking him, saying what an amazing portrait Mike had drawn and how it brought their son home. And, you know, it chokes you up when you say that because they're, they are writing from their heart. They have no voice. And the only thing I can give their families other than the portrait is their voice. Their story. Do you remember the first one he did? Oh, yeah, Michael Johnson. He was one of the first people killed in the war. Just five days into the Iraq war, Corpsman Michael Johnson was killed by a rocket-propelled grenade that landed in his Humvee. That's the envelope it came in. It's the letter he received. Actually, 19th of March, 2004. From the fallen hero's wife, Sharice, after she received the portrait. Dearest Michael, I wanted to send a letter and attempt to express how grateful I truly am. There are no real words that can describe how thankful I am to you for capturing my handsome husband's image. The portrait is amazing and I'm speechless. Your talent is phenomenal and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing this for me. You have opened your heart and are willing to share your great talent with others. It is people like yourself along with family and friends that make the grieving process even slightly bearable. Sincerely, the wife of a superhero, Sharice Johnson. What he didn't mention is that Michael Johnson's widow offered to pay for the portrait. Not a chance. And Mike looked at that and says, he's, he's a medic. Bravest group of people that I know. He says, I can't charge her. So, because he'd been doing portraits for, you know, commissions for many years. <laughs> Three decades. Mike Regan has drawn some 10,000 portraits of celebrities. Seattle's Children's Hospital raised more than $10 million through those autographed celebrity portraits he donated. And so when his buddy Doc Nunn declares... He's an angel who walks among us. Who among us would disagree? I was in awe of Mike to know that somebody that lived that insanity in Vietnam was able to come back and you know suffer through his own demons, but to, to be so committed and to be so down to earth and want to do something to serve others. Our world is broken. If we can do one thing to help that or help one person, that's what Mike does. His inspiration for each of the 4,100 portraits he's created these last 11 years. His face was the one I see every day. The face Mike Regan will never forget. That face has been a part of every day of my life. His name. I didn't know his name. Didn't know his name. But he knew it was the mailman, didn't know his name. When he showed up, we all knew he had a mailbag, and we all prayed that there'd be something in that bag for us. That Marine, the company driver who delivered mail, took his last breath in Mike Regan's arms 46 years ago, and he's been with him every day since. All of my drawings are done because of those last words. I just want to go home. They didn't get to. He's Mike Regan's inspiration for each of the portraits. Ralph Morales' uncle, Vinny Santanello. But he was a kid that was forced to be a man. Letters from Vietnam. Letters written by a 19-year-old, Vinny Santanello, to his sister Lily.
Ralph's mom. I had no idea about those letters. My mom died in July of 2002. Lily's son Ralph grew up in the same house in Jamaica, Queens as his uncle Vinny, the uncle he never met. He now has those letters. This one describes a dream his uncle had. All you said was, you're home. Boy, I wish that dream came true. But someday, I will come home. He never did. He died March 28th of 1968. Killed in that same firefight. I was there. That Doc Nunn and Mike Regan zero one zero zero. survived. I'm seeing March 28th, 1968. Right now. And I know that that's the date that he was killed. March 28th, 1968. Uncle Vinny wrote his final letter. Well, I got to be going now. Love your son, brother, Vinny. Notice the ink stains, blood stains. And seeing the blood splatter on it, it's just, it's chilling. And heartache, 46 years later. I can never do what, what men like Vinny did and what they had to go through. The heartache and all the questions. That was always the question that I had as a child. You know, was my uncle in peace? Was he in pain? Now he knows. He was at peace and there was someone holding him and taking care of him. That someone is working on his next portrait, Vinny Santanello. I mean, to me, that's amazing that we know. How do we know? I'm grateful to still be alive. Doc Nunn and Mike Regan reconnected after all these years. The only reason Doc's back in my life is because of this project. Mike and I were talking on the phone. I said, um, I need to know who the company driver was. I knew exactly who he was talking about. Doc says, Vincent Santanello. Saint. His nickname. I said, how'd you know that? He's been wearing his KIA bracelet for 25 years. He wears it with pride and... An ache in my heart. It's not fair. You know, he just came out to say goodbye. Keep your head down, okay? Goodbye to Vietnam, to the war. That fellow Marine was going home in a few days. <laughs> he was counting on it even as he looked into the eyes of the Marine Corporal who held him tight in the midst of that firefight. Artist Mike Regan. He was with his brothers, and he, he died in the arms of men that loved him, and that meant a lot to me. With a name now, Mike Regan was able to reach out to the Santanello family in New York. You know, I told Ralph this on the phone, and I said, you know why that's important to me? He said, why? I said, because the last time I held somebody from your family, he died... I said, I'd like to hold somebody from your family who's alive. He says, he took a real, took a deep breath when he heard that, and he says, I understand. He died for this country. He died for me. I think I've shared 46 years of my life with Vincent. I'm really pleased that I'm going to be able to give his family this piece of him and piece of me. Because I know that my uncle... He made the ultimate sacrifice. And men like Mike, they made the sacrifice. They got to come home. And my uncle did it. When I handed it to him, I'm just going to say, uh, your uncle looked at me and said he wanted to go home. And uh, in my heart, this portrait is the beginning of that trip. I'm going to be able to do what Vincent asked me to do. Get him home. From his home in Long Island, New York, Ralph Morales. Well, come on. Look at you. Traveled to Edmonds, Washington, to meet Mike Reed. Oh, nice to see you, man. To meet Doc Nunn. Doc. Ralph, Ralph Morales. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. And to bring Uncle Vinny home. Mike Regan got to come home when so many of his buddies didn't. What's behind me is a documentation of this war. This is the real cost. Talk to these people, okay? Those are the people who died. Everybody that you're looking at in these posters. This Vietnam War veteran from Edmonds got to live his life the way he wanted to live it. I'm dealing with death every day. And he's living it now, as difficult as it is on some days. I'm trying to draw some life out of death. He has to do this. This whole project is about love. You know, you know, we call it love and respect, but it's my love for my guys who died with me that are enabling me to love people I don't know. It's like breathing. So when I spend this private time, okay, 
it's helping me heal. And I think on the other end, because of that, it's helping them heal. He's in a good place. 4,100 families he's helped heal. I'm telling their family that they're not alone. Just awesome. The country's got a broken heart right now. We're in the middle of a 10-year war. We have a broken heart. I can't fix the country. But I do believe I can spend five hours on my drawing table and begin to fix a family. With each portrait he brings to life, with each heart he touches, Mike Regan is honoring the men and women who've sacrificed for us. But it's my love for my guys who died with me that are enabling me to love people I don't know. That means a lot to the families. When they hear that I'm doing this for free and when they hear that, I, that I'm going to do them all, what they see is someone, a total stranger, reaching out to them saying simply, I care. Was there ever any doubt? How can I not do that? Yes. I think and I believe this. Joe came Tuesday, took out a whole bunch of pictures. Today they're starting to arrive all over the country. Today. And today, a decade after that first portrait of Michael Johnson, so I, I had to come. Regan's friends are gathering to celebrate the Fallen Heroes Project, to celebrate Mike Regan. So good to see you. Nice to see you too. And all the portraits he's created, his gifts of love. Vinny Santanello's nephew. And he said, you know, I, I do this work because of your uncle. Ralph Morales is the guest of honor. He's here with everyone else to see Mike's latest creation. For him and for me, I think it's a sense of closure. I held him in my arms as we were trying to save his life. Tonight, Mike Regan unveils his latest creation. Vincent's last words to me were, Mike, I just want to go home. I think in my heart that I'm beginning the trip that your uncle wanted to make 46 years ago. This is for you. Vinny is interwoven in everything that this man has done. Vinny's death has brought peace, love, closure, understanding, dignity, and honor to so many people. I stand here 46 years after his death, damn proud to say that I'm his nephew. Vinny Santanello is home now. This man, this, this kid, had propelled Mike to do great things. And he brought peace to so many people. And if Vinny had to die so that thousands upon thousands of families could feel a sense of, of dignity and closure and respect for their lost loved one, that makes him all the more valiant in my eyes. I can say to myself that I've actually done what Vincent asked me to do. Get him home. <laughs>